going here today. The Unicorns playing back-to-back -back days on the public side of things. Tough loss for them last night. They, they try to come back late, just couldn't do it. Yeah, two runs in the ninth on a huge shot from Noah Childress off the scoreboard. Sixth longest home run this season in the USPBL 377 projected distance by flight scope off the bat. Uh, you mentioned it was a blustery day today. It is, and it was yesterday, but that was a home run ball. The only home run that didn't need any wind aid was was very hard hit off the bat. But yeah, the, the, it was a really good pitching matchup between the two teams. Both Riggleman and Derek Eddington for the Hoppers were surprisingly good. Both a lot of fun to watch. Um, it was scoreless until the bottom of the fifth in which the Hoppers got one and then they got one in the sixth, seventh and eighth. And you know, they played station to station baseball, but they had some two out hits and uh, some clutch aggressive base running and made a, a couple nice plays at the plate, slide under some tags uh, and pick up a much needed win. Um, that's a Unicorns team that's kind of had their number this year. That's always been a fun matchup to watch. Um, but now the Hoppers 3-6 and six against those Unicorns, now into double-digit wins, um, trying to get more on Saturday when they'll have the doubleheader. Um, but it, it, it's always a, a nice thing for any other of the other three teams when you can beat the Unicorns. They've just been so good this year. Well, starting pitching has kind of been a challenge in the last few weeks around the league, not because they have bad arms, but just because guys leaving for the right reasons Greg Loken and kind of the, the latest guy to leave, putting the Mammoths in a little bit of an interesting situation. Colin Ledbetter has done a really good job to step up. You know, some guys last night, you know, maybe coming to the forefront as becoming some of the better starting pitchers on their teams. It's interesting and cool to see guys kind of step into roles they're not familiar with and flourish. Yeah, like I, I think you put it a great way. We've seen a lot of guys leaving for the right reasons, right. and it causes these other guys who maybe didn't have as big a role to get an opportunity to put themselves in a position to leave for the right reasons. I think Ledbetter's done a fantastic job of that. We knew him as the knockout closer, the one-two punch in the eight or ninth inning to kind of end the games for the man. It's all season long, and it's a challenge to switch from that. He talked about it and develop a routine and get into a rhythm before a game and be prepared to go five or six innings. He went seven his last time out, struck out seven. He's been so impressive. That slider is, is still working for him like it has been all season long and it's been really fun to watch him kind of take over that role for a guy who was a good friend of his and Greg Lokanen and a guy who's been great all year and and Lokanen now he's moved on and and he's he's done a nice job with it. it I think it wouldn't have been a surprise to see someone like Ledbetter maybe struggle through this situation and through the first two starts it's looked really good had a couple bumps in the road in the first one but really flipped it around in the second one and I think right now we don't expect any hiccups here in start number three. Well, as our My Michigan TV pregame show continues, we want to say hello to everybody watching in the stands here today. Hope you enjoy what should be a really good game. Also want to encourage you and let you know that My Michigan TV also has an app that you can download on your phone or on the TV, and that makes it just a lot easier to put it on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, what's the saying? There's an app for that. There's an app for everything <laughs> these days, and we've got one too. So, yeah, be sure to check it out. And uh, at your ease, you can find our lovely faces on your phone. Or not, you know. <laughs> Fast forward through this right. part. Colin Ledbetter and Jake Fiorito, the two starting pitchers here today, brought to you by Ascension, as always, here on the US PBL Network. We've already talked about Ledbetter Fiorito starting to be a dependable guy as well for the Unicorns. Yeah, he was uh, one of those guys who we didn't quite know what his role was going to be uh, when he first got here. Um, and he solidified himself as a very good five complete inning starter um, and that's nice for this unicorns pitching staff who has had its fair share of ups and downs it's you know a fair share of roster turnover as well uh, and Fiorito's been a consistent guy consistently in the threes as far as the ERA goes like we said we'll get five or six out of him tonight similar to Riggleman from last night is not going to wow you with the stuff but he gets out he's done a nice job not walking a ton of batters he struck out over 35 guys this season walked less than 10 those are really good numbers that's kind of want where you want those ratios to be and to do that in 20 plus innings of work shows you that he's consistent and that he can do this on a day-to-day -day basis and if he were to have an off day it's probably a fluke and a, and a small bump in the road that he can fix moving forward but he's a good guy to have out there trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses it's very unlikely that this unicorns team does that they haven't done that all season long and with Fiorito on the mound they put themselves in a good position to make sure that doesn't become a thing Kyle Ledberg kind of talked about how his offense is heating up so he's looking for some quick innings here today to kind of keep that momentum going 
the luck really hasn't been on the side of the Mammoths so far, but when you look at these numbers, I mean, some of these newer hitters that have been added to the lineup, we've talked about Brian Leaf in the past and what he's been able to do lately with the home run ball, and just some other guys that are going to start to come into the picture, and the Mammoths, you know, shuffling their roster a bit. This lineup has some speed. It has some power. They're just looking to put it fully together with the wins at this point. Well, yeah, let's start with the speed. 45 of 51 yeah. on stolen bases this season. I mean, they're by far the fastest team on the base bats. There's one guy, if you don't count their new guy, Mitch Morales, who doesn't have a stolen base this year, and that's Duncan Hewitt, and he hasn't gone. So, you know, no harm there. Um, they're very aggressive on the base bats, and that's kind of what you have to do when you're not getting – the breaks to go your way as far as batting balls in play, you got to be aggressive. If you get a walk, you got to get to second, got to get to third, put yourself in scoring position. That's how you get those runs to come around when you've been a little bit unlucky. And then when you do get lucky and things do start to go your way or maybe the way they're supposed to go, you're already in good position to get more runs than you probably normally would. Um, and if you, you know, as far as the luck factor goes, if you want to be a nerd about it and start to look at the advanced stats, there's three or four guys on this roster who really just have had very hard hit balls all season long barrels putting balls into the outfield that are just right to some to some outfielders we have some really good outfielders throughout this entire league some guys who have made some fantastic plays robbed players of hits and this mammoth's lineup is no different they've suffered through that perhaps a little bit more than most um, and you're just kind of waiting for them to break through. We saw a guy like Nick Caruso kind of maybe find it a couple weeks ago, see if guys like Elijah Brown, Brian Leaf, like you mentioned, other guys like that can really break through. I think the, the tough thing that this Mammoths lineup struggles with is the power. There's only a few guys who you really wouldn't be surprised at any given moment to hit a home run. That that list is about two or three deep for them. I think there's, they need to look for a little bit more power down the order, see if that can become a factor in their offense, and that'll bring a lot more guys around. We'll have his keys to the game soon. We'll also have our starting lineups on the broadcast. If you're in the stadium, you'll hear him for your public address announcer, Chris Snyder, and company here today in a little bit. Enjoy the game if you're watching in the stadium. We'll be right back after this on the USPBL Network. Stick with us. these business owners find the time for peace of mind because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Welcome back to Jimmy John's Field, everyone. Getting ready for first pitch between the Mammoths and the Unicorns. This broadcast is brought to you by the following. Belfour Property Restoration. Ascension. Budweiser. DTE Energy. Fifth Third Bank. Jarpcom. Jimmy John's. Macomb Community College. McLaren Macomb. McQuaid Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Refrigeration. Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers. Pepsi. Scott's. And UWM, we thank all those fine partners for what they do for the USPBL. Now the time to check your starting lineups here today. First for the visiting Westside Woolly Mammoths. Actually, we will have to do that after the break as the anthem is imminent. We'll be back with those lineups when we get back in the USPBL Network.
slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Jeremy and Brendan back with you here at the ballpark. Now time to check that starting lineup for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. So will be the first team up here today as the visitors, Mitch Morales, the brand new fresh face 0 for 4 thus far to begin his professional career will begin at second base. Tanner Thomas will bat second and play center. Wade Weinberger will Bat third and DH here today, it's Parker, Elijah Brown, and Brian Leaf in the heart of that dangerous part of the lineup for the Mammoths. Duncan Hewitt, who started to turn it around lately at the plate, will catch today. Buddy Dwayne Jr. plays shortstop Connor Bagneski, rounds things out and plays left field with Colin Ledbetter on the mound. As for the home Utica Unicorns here today, they will send Drew Galassi at the top, as always, hitting 294, checking into this game here today. He'll play center field. Malik Bolin will bat second and play left. Landy Castro in the three hole as he plays right. Sikopoulos, Childress, Lambert in the middle. Childress with a big home run yesterday that went pretty far. Matt Parkinson will bat seventh of the catch today. Lewis Attilis will be in the eight hole and play shortstop. Jonathan Hodo bats ninth and plays second base with Jake Fiorito tossing the pitches right now for these 18 and seven Utica Unicorns here tonight. Time for your keys to the game. What do you have today? I think it's gonna be interesting to take a look at these two starters. It'll, it should be a nice battle. I, I, I wanna still pay attention to how Ledbetter does um, you know, getting comfortable in this starter role. That was something he mentioned after his second start that he, in that second one, he, he developed a rhythm, a routine a little bit better um, before that game. We'll see how he can do here in number three. It's going to be early run scoring for the Unicorns offensively. They struggled with that last night, didn't score any runs until the top of the ninth, and it was too late, which is a surprise just for how good they've been at early run scoring this year. It's won them you know, many of those 18 games. So if they can do that again, they'll be in a good position. But this is another Mammoths team similar to the Hoppers last night, trying to get to double-digit wins, trying to get off the schneid and kind of get back to some winning ways that they were near earlier. And everybody's still chasing this unicorn squad. So for the Mammoths, I think they, they might need some long balls today, get the advantage of the win, kind of like we talked about in the pregame show. If they can get a little bit of power, should be in, in a good spot to, to take a lead. Mitch Morales will stride to the plate. Bigger Pernan, he is one for four to begin his professional career. So he's already gotten that first hit out of the way, which is a good thing. You always kind of want to throw that aside and get it as quickly as you can. Yeah, especially if you can do it in your first game, too. You know, you never want to start over and who knows, maybe can spiral into a slump. So it is always nice to get one right away. First pitch of the ball game at 7.02, framed in, no, framed off the plate. 
for ball one. Check the defense behind Fiorito here today. Brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. It's Bolden and left. Glossy out in center. Castro in right. Lambert and Sakopoulos on the corners. Hodo and Attilis up the middle with Parkinson behind the plate here tonight. 1 0. Outside. 2 0 on Mitch Morales. Defense each and every night. Brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype production proven. Corner infielders kind of playing that no doubles look against Morales to begin the game. They're hugging the line. Here's the 2-0 shot to Hodo at seconds. Vacuums it up for out number one. Hodo was pretty busy yesterday at second base, and he has struggled a few times this year with maybe some uh, interesting ground balls that have taken some tough bounces, and it's really through no fault of his own that some of those haven't quite gone his way. But in the last few, he still had some tough bounces that he's handled well and fielded pretty nicely for an out. Has one of the highest projected average through the analytics by the time the season ends as well, interestingly enough. First pitch to Tanner Thomas, curveball that dips in for strike one. For Fiorito, it's a two-seam fastball, curveball slider changeup. He's using the slider a bit more as the year goes on. Started mostly as just a curveball breaking ball. We're constantly kind of learning about how these guys evolve. Sometimes they change a pitch. Sometimes that slider morphs into a curveball. We were talking with Zach Blankenship early about that as well here today. Not playing here today. He's a member of the Beavers, but working at the ballpark as guys often do, especially the guys who are from out of town. But for him, it was his slider that became a curveball, kind of ditched the splitter. We've seen a few guys add that slider. They're just such similar grips and such similar action, the, the curve and the slider, that they tend to seem similar anyways to hitters and kind of act the same way. Some guys can differentiate the two a little bit better. But for Blankenship, yeah, he was kind of ditching that slider and adding some depth to that curve. It's essentially the same velocity and same horizontal action, but it's a lot deeper break at the plate. 3-1, fly ball to right center field. Galassi looking at that one towards the trees. It's gone! Tanner Thomas strikes for a run here in the first, his second home run of his pro career. Yeah, Thomas got himself on a fastball count and got a fastball, and he did not miss. He was absolutely ready for it. Nice job waiting for his pitch. That's what happens when you fall behind in the count if you're Fiorito. Hasn't given up a home run this year, and... Sometimes you just get unlucky. That's the first one for him. Early run scoring is key for the Unicorns to win, but hey, if you can be the opponent and do that and kind of battle with them early, who knows what happens in the later stages of this game. Mammoth's off to a good start. 384, the distance on that one to right center field, and that was on a line, 93 miles an hour. You could tell it had some hair on it as soon as it thumped off the bat. That's one of our longest home runs this year. But, I mean, when you do hit it out right center field, that, that, that's, that's a spot that's, that's going to carry that. 384 is now third for longest home run this season behind Ari Skopoulos and Brian Leaf, another mammoth. First pitch to Weinberger, hugs the line, and it'll hook foul. Past Ari Skopoulos, all these unicorns. The uniforms look a little bit brighter when they're wearing the home whites at this part of the day. But the sun is brightly shining on all of them right now. That shadow just shy of the pitcher's mound right now is sending somebody down to get baseball down there. They're waiting for something. There's a mammoth trotting, yeah, for yeah, baseball. It's, it's Vasquez out of the bullpen, I think, maybe. He had a nice outing the other day. Rafi yeah. Vasquez. Non-public. Went six innings. Only struck out one and walked two, but probably his best outing of his pro career thus far. Yeah, we talked to Elijah Brown of these mammoths pregame about that outing, and he said Vasquez just really had the stuff, and he's a guy who – 
when he's on his game, his fastball and slider have just such good arm action and down and away movement to right-handed hitters that, you know, even if he does give up contact, he didn't strike out a lot in that non-public game, but he just gave up so many ground balls. Brown said they turned like five double plays, and that's kind of what it's about for guys who are not high on the strikeout rate echelon, just getting soft contact. Fly ball to right center field, kind of in that same spot. It'll stay in the park, though. Weinberger has speed. Look out. Here he comes galloping to second base. He'll get there with a slide. Back-to-back -back extra base hits here in the first inning. Well, can't quite think of a better start in this game for the Mammoths. Already a run on the board, a man in scoring position. Your best RBI hitter now comes up to the plate against the best team in the league. So here's Houston Parker now carrying his 280 average to the plate. He's driven in 17. Number 18 potentially waiting at second base with Weinberger there. Hodo jockeys with him behind the bag. Fiorito comes home for his pitch. Slider away. And I wouldn't rule out Weinberger trying to get to third base here with the right-handed batter in the box. He's in the top three in the league in steals, nine to his name this year, yet to be caught. Checks him a couple times, so 1-0. Weinberger gets to third base, and essentially any ball in play will probably score him with just one out. But Parker's already ahead 2-0. He'll wait for something in the zone, try to drive it into the outfield, likely the opposite way. Two zero. That looks like it bit the off hand or the throwing hand for Parkinson there behind the plate. Really nice day here today. Seventy-seven degrees. Those big billowy clouds, which I feel like we haven't seen much this year. There's some good sunsets here throughout the year. We've had a few, but now the two-one chipped foul. I think we can probably rule out that idea of Weinberger trying for a third, doesn't want to risk it with only one out and still in scoring position. Probably would have gone by now. Two two runner move in. Good pitch to throw on right there. Got him. Parkin says not, says not so fast. Nails Weinberger for the second out here in the first. Well, I sit corrected <laughs> on two strikes. Weinberger decided you sit corrected. to try for it. Yeah, well, wow. I'm not standing, am I? <laughs> uh, but on, on two strikes, Weinberger decided to try for it. Pretty good pitch to run on. Outside breaking ball. But Parkinson, he's got a cannon back there. Nice job by Lambert to cover the bag. I'm going to take care of this mutant bug that's really... Scaring our friend here. You going to take care of this bug here? I'm not an exterminator. <laughs> what is this? What do I look like? I got to kill enough bugs at my house and with my girlfriend around. I can't, I can't be the bug <laughs> killer all the time. 3-2. Curveball that hung, but Parker took it. Guy that has pretty good view of the zone more often than not is... He'll trot down to first base. So just to give you a picture of this bug, and then we'll move on. Like, big fly eyes, hairy on it's like the back of his like head. It's long, though. How long? And, and the only way I can describe his the bottom of this bug is it looks like a helicopter. What would you call that? A, not a tail, but you know what I mean. Like similar to a dragonfly? Is that what you're getting at? No, like a. this one dips inside 1-0. Oh, his like tail has, like, the rotating blade? Well, no, it just, like, sticks up straight, oh. like, at an angle. Hmm. There you go, your bug play-by-play -play here today. <laughs> there, there's all kinds of them that we find in the booth. Riveting stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give them the full picture like they're here, yeah, right? Yeah, no, that's that's fair. They they know what that bug looks like now. One whole line drive to left center field. Brown going to see that one carry to the gap as well. Easily two for him with his speed. 
Maybe not. Is a little mm. closer than expected. John Hodo slaps the tag on, but regardless, two runners in scoring position. Now with two outs here in the first. Boy, these mammoths came to play today. Absolutely ready for everything. A lot of these hits are early in the at-bats, too. Brown was someone we talked about, changing his batting grip and kind of his approach. Colin Ledbetter talked about it as well to me before the game. He said, hey, look, I want to have as quick of innings as possible. And obviously that's the goal for any starting pitcher. But he was also like, hey, my offense is churning it out a little bit. I want to keep that momentum going, keep it going for the team as a whole and get them back out there as quick as possible. Now the 1-0. Fastball that's pounded foul. Brian Leaf at the plate. 7 for 37 start for Brian. He's hit three home runs so far this year. 29 of them in college his senior season. You knew it would translate sooner than later in pro ball. Just needed that kind of everyday opportunity, which he gets here at the USPBL. And you look down at this Mammoth lineup card with Nick Caruso out for the next three to four weeks. Most guys are going to be in there every day. Greg Vaughn Jr., the only guy on the bench right now, he's the only available player technically. But in a league where you don't play every single day and just how it's kind of put together, you don't necessarily need a big bench. Nobody carries a big bench. I mean, you want to bolster that pitching roster. The cap is pretty firm at 19 players per roster. Here's the 2-2 now. Hit hard on the ground. Fiorito throws the glove out. And we'll toss it over to first base and a good job to limit the damage. They did hit him hard. Three extra base hits in the inning, including a blast. That's the only way to a line drive blast, if you want to say, from Tanner Thomas. that carried the right center field wall, one of our longer home runs so far this year. Time for your thrifty florist sweethearts of the game here today. Chelsea Estes is back. She's hovering around usually the right side of the stands to deliver flowers to your sweetheart. We're a little bit short staff here today, so maybe can't get a camera on that, but uh, Thrifty Flores sponsors your sweetheart of the game each and every game at Jimmy John's Field. Now time for your freaky fast facts presented by Jimmy John's here tonight. The world, the word almost is the longest word in the English language to have all of its letters in alphabetical order. Wow. Huh. That's, a, that's a bit of a surprise. I wouldn't have guessed that. 2013 was the first year since 1987 to feature four different numbers. Hmm. Okay. Wow. They, they're giving us the good ones today. <laughs> Some English words only exist in plural forms, such as glasses, scissors, jeans, and pajamas. Pajamas, pajamas. What do you, what do you, what do you go pajamas. with? Pajamas. Yeah. I don't know about those first two. I mean, I, I get glasses, like when you're referring to the lenses that help you blind people see. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, but glass is singular. And scissor could be like an action, you know, to scissor back and forth, left and right, whatever. It's, I mean, often in sports, us announcers would use a term like scissor to describe a play. I don't know if those quite fit. Uh, jeans and pajamas, yeah, but. I'll let you take it up with whoever writes these. Yeah, I'm not exactly got, sure I, who it give is. Give me your number. We got to talk. <laughs> Time to tech defense here behind Colin Ledbetter brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype production proven. It's Bagneski in left, Thomas in center. Leaf out and right, Parker and Brown on the corners, Morales and Dwayne up the middle with Duncan Hewitt catching the pitches for the foreseeable future. As we mentioned with Nick Caruso out. Boy, when Nick Caruso was hitting the bad spot, nobody really expected even him for him to end up in the emergency room after that game. He even caught a few more pitches last week as that game 
came to a close. Thankfully, he didn't need surgery. That was the original diagnosis, but. Yeah, I was, I mean, finding out about that later, I was shocked to learn that he stayed in that game, you know, after hearing what the injury was. And even some of his teammates, and like you said himself, you know, they were giving him some crap for it after the game. You know, you just got hit in the man spot. You're all right. You'll be fine. And and he texted him, you know, a few hours later from the hospital and said, guys, this is this is serious. I, I'm not I'm not in good shape. But he was, you know, lighthearted about it when we talked to him pregame. He has a good attitude about it. Sounds like there's a chance. It's more in – not necessarily up to him, up to how he feels, the comfort level, the pain level as the weeks go on, that he comes back for the playoffs or maybe a week before. Line drive to right, going to hang up there. Leaf with the teardrop catch for the first out here in the first. But yeah, that's a, that's a tough guy to lose for the Mammoths. Not only defensively, he's been such a great catcher behind the plate combined with Hewitt, but his bat was starting to heat up. You know, it, he was one of those guys that we talked about you know, underneath the the overlying numbers, it looked like he could be a really good hitter. You know, expected batting average, barrel and hard hit percent. Um, and he was starting to turn it around. His batting average went up 40 points in a weekend um, after he got five hits. And we kind of expected that to that trend to continue. And, and now that's a bat that the Mammoths lose. one to Bolin, fastball at 91 by him. Average fastball is right there for Ledbetter. He's been high as 93. Fastball slider circle change. His third start here in the USPBL this year. There's the slider, pump slow. 133 ERA, 12 strikeouts per nine, three walks per nine. All very good numbers all the way around. 2-1, line drive up the box. Boy, what is it about line drives here today, huh? These guys are just seeing the ball really well right now. It's going to come to the point as well where that shadow is going to fully encompass the mound, at least for an inning or two. It started just in front of the track between the mound and home plate, which is actually not much of a thing in baseball anymore these days. I didn't even realize that until I think you were having a conversation it was, with it was somebody. Josh Hines, yeah. yeah. Which I, I am in agreement with him. I like, from, from now that I have had that conversation and focused on it, I like the no track, just the island mound. I think it looks pretty good. And he brought up an interesting point, too. It's better for fans and for scouts and people like that to see the pitches and their movement on the way to the plate. 1-0, high fly ball, carrying Bagneski to the warning track. I think he thought it was a little bit deeper than it actually was as he comes in for out number two. Well, with that guy at the plate, no surprise that he thought it was a little bit deeper. Castro has a lot of power on that bat, not necessarily in quantity, but in quality. When he hits the ball out, he's only two home runs this year, but when he hits the ball out and he hits it hard, it is a no-doubter, and it's gone quick. We talked about Colin Ledbetter wanting to get in and out of innings. He's two-thirds of a way doing that, facing just four batters. Here in the first, here's the first pitch, just the Coppolis fouled off. It's not just about his offense, but he said, hey, look, this Unicorns offense, the more pitches they see, they're disciplined, they see it well. And just from his experience this year and last year with some guys obviously returning to this lineup, when you give them more pitches, they're going to do some damage. They're just, they just have a lot of really disciplined guys, just overall quality hitters, um, whether it's guys that are singles hitters or guys that are power hitters like Ari right here. They wait for their pitch. They will make you throw them a good strike, and once they get behind in the count, they will battle and battle and foul some pitches off until you get the, the pitch they want. Boy, that fastball with tumbling spin on it. That's curveball-like spin in this league. One and two here on Ari Sakopoulos. Yeah, there's only a few guys league-wide who are going to get those numbers as far as RPMs go on the fastball. Ledbetter, one of those guys. Slider, not sure it popped the way exactly he wanted it. I think he still thought he got the call, but instead 
taken for a 2-2 count here. Yeah, that slider's probably supposed to be more middle of the plate rather than outside to the lefty. Two two caught him inside. There's the slider. Maybe he was looking for in on the hands as Sakopoulos fans threw it. No damage for Colin Ledbetter here in the first. His offense already has given him a one nothing lead. I'm all in with HR and organizational development council. I'm all in with marketing and business development council. I'm all in with operations and member experience council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union Soundstage out in right center field. Usually in jeopardy when a guy like Ari Sakopoulos is coming to the plate, but he struck out his first at bat back in the first. That was a four batter inning for Colin Webber. He looks sharp just like he wanted to all throughout this game. He had some really quick innings in his last start. And really to go seven innings in this league, that's a big deal because it means you're really efficient means your pitch count is down and maybe it's a little luck as well because your teammates have already gotten in maybe earlier that week but there's also something to be said hey this guy has a great game going don't take him out from a, a team perspective but the USPBL is more focused on getting guys their reps obviously and developing these arms and bats so sometimes you will have a guy go three innings for saying a doubleheader tomorrow like we'll have just to make sure that everybody gets their due diligence in. Fiorito looking to bounce back after the first. Gave up a home run to Tanner Thomas on a line to right center field. Walking a double. And another double. Followed that. The good thing was is he gets away relatively unscathed for three extra base hits, only one run to come across, and stranded two in scoring position. That's a nice job for Jake to get out of the inning in the fashion that he did. It certainly could have been much worse. But this is where he, he can't continue. He can't keep getting behind in counts like this. The Mammoths hitters seem to be disciplined and – are good enough to wait for their pitch and really do damage if they get in a lot of fastball counts. Now the 3-1. Fastball low. Fastball has been a little bit below average velocity here today for whatever reason. He's usually 87, 88. He's topped out at 90. The curveball and the slider average 75 and 76 respectively. And the changeup, which he throws very little compared to his other pitches, averages out at 77 miles an hour. Here's Buddy DeWayne now. Buddy 205 in the average column. Definitely has some extra base pop, though. Nine of them. There's a single and a right past the diving arms of Hodo. And back-to-back -back base runners again to begin this second. I just absolutely love the approach from these mammoth hitters. Some guys are ready to hit 
on the first pitch. I think they really all are. And we've seen a few guys wait for their pitch, get ahead in the count, and then get on base either with a walk. We've seen two of those or a couple hits. And Dwayne, kind of like Brown last inning, was ready to swing it on the first pitch, saw something that he liked, wasn't going to let Fiorito get a first pitch strike and put it in play. Here's Connor Bagneski now at the bottom of the order. Cooled off since his real hot start. Dips the curveball in for strike one. Hitting 200 coming into play tonight. One extra base hit to speak of. Does have three steals when he's been on. 0-1, fouled off the curveball again. And he does still get on at a pretty good amount, that 200 average, but 322 on base. 120 points above your average is a very good thing. No matter where you are, he's got one less walk than his nine strikeouts, which is something that bodes well for a guy who maybe his batting average doesn't quite tell you the full story. The 0-2. Slider low, blocked well by Parkinson. He's had a good day thus far throughout a runner in a big spot really because Thomas had homeward Weinberger double directly after that he was trying to steal third base with Houston Parker at the plate thing could have really unraveled if that out which was the second out wasn't recorded here's the one two looped foul yeah I mean if you think about it it's probably a one run or maybe even two run double for Elijah Brown if Weinberger stays on base. I mean, he scores standing up on a double from Brown. Those are the two fastest guys in the league right now. But I, I don't mind the aggressiveness early in the game. That's what you want to do. You want to jump out to an early lead, put some pressure on that starting pitcher. They've done that already. Bagneski checks his swing. They say he did not go. Fiorito comes into the game, 2.90 ERA. Eight walks to 24 Ks. So that averages out to two walks an inning, or a game. Here's the 2-2. Looped right to Sakopoulos, ate him up a bit, but he's able to hold on for out number one. I think Ari might have just been rushing a little bit too much. Not sure if he was planning to try to get Dwayne at second for one and then go back to first. Could have just been a tough, tough bounce for him. But back to Fiorito, I think the key for Jake is the type of contact. He's given up a decent amount of contact this year. But a lot of fly ball outs, more fly ball outs than ground ball, almost 40% fly outs. That's pretty high. That's above league average. And opponents are hitting 286 against him and 300 plus on the right side. So he really has to focus on working, focus on working down in the zone against right-handed hitters, making sure they're working hard to get that barrel on the ball and under it. You know, all these hitters have, are really focusing on launch angle and driving the ball into the gaps, Fiorito has to pitch against that. 1-0 and oh on Mitch Morales here. He grounded out to the second baseman, Hodo, his first time up. He is the leadoff batter. Position in the lineup he's familiar with. Did that all this year in college. Now the 1-0. Oh. Little chopper to Hodo. It's going to score a run, and it also will record the second out. Two, nothing, Mammoths here in the second. With a runner on third, less than two outs. All you want to do is put it in play on the right side. That that will usually score the run, especially on the ground too. Hewitt can just take off. That's kind of the rule of thumb as a base runner when you're on second and third. If it's on your right side, pause for a beat, wait a minute, see if you can go to third. If not, if it's on your left side, on the ground, you got to go. Get on your horse, and Hewitt did and scored. First pitch to Tanner Thomas, low. Correct me if I'm wrong. I obviously haven't seen every Tanner Thomas at bat, but was that the hardest-looking ball you've seen him hit? Yeah, definitely. He does have another home run, but I, I, I would certainly agree. That one jumps off the page. 
93 off the bat. And to go 384 feet on the line to right center, you would have thought maybe it was a bit more than 93 as well. Yeah, we, I mean, we don't see very many 90-plus exit velocities in the league, even though a Childress's home run last night, which was one of the harder hit balls that we can remember in the league, was only 88. Now, there is a little bit of accuracy concerns with flight scope. It's not perfect and not the absolute best measure of the advanced statistics, but it does get the job done for the most part. And, you know, I think the ones for Thomas seemed pretty accurate. I think it definitely tracks pitches in in terms of velos off the arm better than going out. 2-1, fastball high and away. 3-1 and one on Tanner Thomas. Already has thrown 45 pitches here through an inning in two-thirds. Well, this is what Thomas did last time. Got ahead 3-1, and one, took a fastball. Deep to right center, Fiorito likely not throwing one here. 3-1 on the ground, right back at him again. Second time he's had to reach that left glove out for the third out in an inning. A little bit more damage down a leadoff walk. A single follows, and the RBI ground out by Mitch Morales, his first career RBI. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union, visit us today. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Colin Ledbetter takes over here in the second inning, and so far so good in terms of his plan. Yeah, you had that fast first inning, and, you know, it's not controlled by him, but his offense has already given him some support. Uh, two runs on the board already, 13 pitches in that first inning for him, and, uh, you know, trying to make quick work, like you mentioned in your conversation with him. See what he can do here in the second inning, but this, this Unicorns lineup, it, it doesn't quite – get easier after the first four batters. I mean, one through nine are all guys who have been dangerous all season long. Five, six, seven due up for the Unicorns here in the second. Childress Lambert Parkinson. Second inning brought to you by Budweiser here today. We thank Budweiser for their partnership with the USPBL. First pitch to Childress. Fastball in for strike one. Just a single, single in that first. Malik Bolin had it up the middle. Struck out Sakopoulos. Had him down 0-2 the hole at bat. Slider outside. See if we see that change up a bit more here in innings 2-3-4. Something he's been working on really hard, really, since the offseason. But when he came back in knowing that he was going to relieve most knew that he probably wouldn't throw much more than the fastball and the slider on a consistent basis but we could very well see that change up evolve and become a larger part of his arsenal if he keeps starting and the need says yes you will keep starting right now and we're kind of at that point in the year you're not going to really bring in a lot of guys. Maybe you'll cut a guy if you feel that, you know, he's not in a place where he's going to contribute to the ball club and have a chance to develop and or move on. There's a little bit more moving and shaking because the draft was so late. I think otherwise, you know, if we were talking about the draft being around the same time, then 
Yeah, at this point, you know, you're venturing in August, trying to wrap these rosters to where you want them to be come playoff time. Not a lot of movement and shaking, but with the minor leagues being cut down over the last couple of years, not a lot of draft positions. I mean, cut it off at 20 this year, where it used to go nearly 50 in the past, or 250 maybe past, but just a different situation for these guys. Yeah, the thing is now spots are just all around baseball. Spots are just becoming more exclusive, and it's had a chain reaction, the changes with the draft and the minor leagues, all the way down to USPBL here in Utica. And for better or for worse, it, it, does, it changes the game no matter how you look at it. 2-2, two, two, line drive into left to base hit. Kevin Lambert follows here in the second as J.J. makes his first appearance with a big round of applause. Really good crowd tonight cheering on J.J. and these two teams. I mean, you look everywhere, lawn, umbrellas, pavilion, behind home plate. Hard to see an open seat. Yeah, this, this grandstand's really filled out. Yeah. Kevin Lambert. <laughs> Tough wipeout slider has him down 0-1 quickly here. That'll probably go on Colin Ledbetter's highlight tape, maybe not Lambert's. <laughs> now the 0-1. Off the end of the bat there. Ledbetter has gotten to two strikes on every hitter, but Golosin, actually maybe Castro as well, but those were just 1-0 pitches. Unofficial, of course. Here's the 0-2. Fastball high. Yeah, Ledbetter does a really nice job of getting in ahead in the count early. Not the best first pitch strike thrower, but he will certainly not wait to challenge you. Another tough slider as Lambert K's through it. Second strikeout for Ledbetter here tonight, just continually improving that. 12 K per nine ratio that he's got going right now. Yeah, the thing that I really like about that strikeout rate is it's very elevated for a starter. Now, again, this is only Ledbetter's third start. We see a lot of relievers in this league have really good rates, but it's because, you know, they get two or three strikeouts in only one or two innings of relief. That will elevate that number a good amount, and that's certainly no knock on them. That's what you want to do is – get in out of the bullpen and strike guys out. But for Ledbetter to have, I believe, 13 innings of starts after his first 11 appearances were all in relief this season and kind of keep that strikeout rate up is pretty good. Oh, one little looper to center. Thomas has to come way in. No, it's Morales coming out. What a good read by him on that ball. That's not a tough one to get to. Yeah, that was almost a perfect blooper from Parkinson. That would have just given him another single, and Morales got a nice jump on it. That's much more difficult to do for the infielders to go back, and, you know, you're on your way out there, and you're thinking, all right, you know, I'm here, but outfielder, call me off. Where are you? Where are you? And obviously you can't look. Got to keep your eye on the ball, and Morales just stuck with it, committed to it, and made a nice play. First pitch to Attilas, another slider. Boy, has that been working well for him. It's the pitch he gets his most swings and misses on. But if he keeps throwing it like that, I think it's going to become a wider margin because it isn't much different than his fastball. But obviously with the heater that he has, you're going to get a good amount of swings and misses on it. But... I guess how he chooses to distribute it while starting might indicate how that changes or stay the same. Well, that slider is no doubt his best strike pitch, not just swinging, but for called strikes too. He does a really nice job, one of the best in the league, just in general at getting called strikes, and that's because of that slider. A lot of guys, especially right-handed hitters, will see it start on their body, and then it lands in the inner half or outer half of the plate right in the middle of the zone, you know, and 
at the end, it's probably a good pitch to swing at and try to put in play, but it's just so hard to catch up to and put on plane that it's gets called to strike so often. 2-1, framed by Hewitt, left off by the home plate umpire. 3-1 and one on Attilas now. Two quick outs from Len Better after the leadoff single here by Childress. He stands on second right now. Here's a 3-1 in the dirt again, and the door not shutting here in the second for the bottom of the order, John Hodo. Gotten his average back to above 300, 306 entering play today. Really good guy to have in a spot like this if you're a Unicorn fan. So consistent gap to gap. One of the best hitters league-wide as far as average goes. First pitch to Hodo. Hewitt has to come out of the crouch, 1-0. This wind has been interesting here today, blowing quite gustily in pregame in BP. And even at the beginning of this inning, it was looking a lot more ominous for the pitcher. That flag just kind of free-flowing out there here in right center field. It didn't really play a factor yesterday. Childress's home run was... A home run, no doubt, off the bat. Slider that he hung, and that one lollipops its way into the stands. One and two on Hodo. Drew Glossy on deck. Another one, two. Hewitt has to get down. Boy, he's been busy so far today. Childress hung up at first, and then he did make his way to third base. Talking about that with Houston Parker, not a guy that usually advances on close pitches like that, but he's like, why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was surprised that he didn't go at first. He, you know, Hewitt really had no idea where that ball was. And then when he did go, I was surprised Hewitt didn't throw it. He's got perhaps the best arm of these catchers. We've seen him throw out a few guys already this year. Could have been out of the inning. Now the 3-2. Attila's heading to second, and Hodo will coax a walk. Back-to-back -back walks by 8 and 9 in the order. Not what you want against these unicorns. Drew Glossy hit it pretty hard his first time up, but it was right at Leaf. Caught the sinking liner. Childress on third, Attilas on second, Hodo on first. At the top of the order looking to do some damage here. First pitch to Drew off the glove inside. Well, for Colin, you don't want to walk or run in. Still have to attack, despite a good hitter at the plate. Fastball in. Galassi has found himself struggling a bit more lately. Hitless in his last two games, which was now which is now an 0 for 8 stretch when you include today. Yeah, but for him, two home runs in each of the games before that, uncharacteristic, he's not going to go 0 for very many times. And he's not a guy who that is going to bother him either. He's got confidence, as he should, for how good he's been all season long. And I don't think that wavers with one or two off days. And the thing for Galassi, when he goes 0 for, there's not strikeouts. It's usually contact outs for him. I was kind of surprised to see. I even second-guessed myself on the air. I think I said he was hitting 280 or something in the pregame, but it is 249 coming into play here today. That average has hung around just below 300 really all season long when we got into month two and three. Now the 2-1. Popped him up to Wayne and company reaching the outfield here, waiting for it to come down. 
It eventually does for out number three. Good job by Ledbetter to scatter a few base runners here in the second. He strikes out one and walks two. We're still two, nothing Manus. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're gonna do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no brainer. Wade Weinberger will lead it off here in the third inning against Jake Fiorito. I'm sure he would love a quick inning without any runs scored. It's only been two here today, but it's just been the length and the amount of pitches that makes it feel a bit longer. 44 thrown through two complete so far here today. Lead off walk in the second and the solo home run back in the first as well. Had a double, did Wade in the first. First pitch fouled off to the left. Double was hard hit, but you could tell that one was going to sink in. But Tanner Thomas's ball just kept carrying and yeah. carrying and carrying on a line. And you can't help but feel like Fiorito got a little lucky in that double from Weinberger. He's shown a little bit of pop this year. Remember earlier in the year, got hung a curveball and absolutely tattooed it to right field. Two and one on Weinberger now. Now the 2-1, change of speeds, and that bit Weinberger. Slider there, or maybe the changeup. He's been using his slider and changeup a bit more as this game has gone on. Now the 2-2. Low, 3-2 and two on Wade. It's already the fourth Three ball count. These mammoths have worked here tonight. Outfielders deep, infielders deep with nobody on and no outs to begin the third. Here's the 3 2. Curveball in on the hands. He took it. And another leadoff walk here in the third. Well, Wade told us an interesting story last week about his walks. His wife is studying to be an osteopath and she had to you know study at home and translate yeah an eye doctor yeah <laughs> and uh and <laughs> and she was studying at home working on wade and he i forget what it, what he said but he had oh st uh, two stigmatisms in yeah. each of his eyes so he found out he needed glasses and he now wears the goggles and said he can see spin now on the baseball and seen it a lot more and he's worked a bunch of walks this year that one i believe his 16th Close play over at first as he dives in. Yeah, interesting story, huh? 
I mean, yeah, he, he said he never thought he, 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 he never thought he had bad vision. He just, you know, couldn't really see spin. And at his college park, it wasn't easier. It wasn't as easy to see the ball. And until he started wearing the glasses, he said, wow, I can, I can really see the ball now. I can hit it better. And he has. Yeah, that's now 17 walks to 18 strikeouts. Really good numbers this late in the season to kind of keep that rate up. And for someone with that much speed to get on base that much is really important. Now the 0-1. Curveball away. and Kind of just adds that extra gusto as well when you're hitting third in the lineup most days, hitting 260. And you can get that walk to strikeout ratio even or nearly even. Provide some speed. Just very versatile what he can do. And even and that's and no, it's not a fluke. It's not just a placebo that he can see the ball better. Even in the advanced stat, he's third in the league in pitches seen per at bat. Almost six pitches per each at bat. That's a team stat too because it's it's annoying for the starting pitcher. It works that pitch count up. Every extra pitch you take in at bat benefits your your team as a whole. Well, a reminder, you can watch us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube to get those notifications when we're live and new content comes out. And also My Michigan TV, which is something you can watch on your laptop, your phone, also on your TV, though, if you have the app. So just like ESPN Plus, you Disney Plus. You, you got Roku, look up My Michigan TV if you... Want it easier on your big screen rather than your phone or laptop? Two and two on Parker. Parker walked on a 3-2 pitch back in the first. That was with two outs. Snap throw back to first as Weinberger just nonchalantly gets back. Maybe a little closer than he expected, a little too close for nonchalant there, but did make it back. I like the play by Parkinson, kind of keep him in check, keep him on his toes, try to get him off balance. Fly ball to right center field. That ball's going to carry on Galoss. He's still going back to the track. Fades in his glove for out number one as Weinberger advances to second. One of the few you'll see go from first to second on a fly ball. Yeah. I was. I saw that ball going out to, to right center, and, and Galoss, he's a great fielder. We talked about that yesterday, a great defender out there in center. Him and Porter swallow balls all season. And off the bat, you kind of think that's probably a ball Galassi gets to. But as a base runner, just in case, you usually hang near first, but off the bag, waiting to see just in case that ball drops that you're not caught off guard and can go to second. And I saw Wade immediately sprint back to first base. And I was thinking, what is, what is he doing? Surely he's not tagging because we, we haven't seen that this year. I don't know if we've seen anybody tag from first to second on a ball on that side of the diamond into center field. But... It was deep enough, and Galassi had to turn and throw it in quickly, and Wade, with that much speed, got to second pretty easily. I love his aggression on the base pass. Oh, 1 low and in. Jean Montaner is warming up in the bullpen on the left field line. The guy that you normally see starts. Keep in mind, again, the Unicorns did play yesterday. Yeah, I think there's a chance we might see some relief arms today that we did see yesterday as well just to get through this game if Fiorito's pitch count keeps climbing. The, the scoreboard does not indicate how good this Mammoth's lineup has been and how they've almost had their way with Jake tonight. Nobody threw more than an inning in relief. Riggleman went five. One for Camacho, one for Calipetro, one for Bewley. 
Here's the one two. Shuttered foul again. Third inning today brought to you by Chevrolet. We thank Chevrolet for their partnership with the USPBL network. Wade Weinberger with a leadoff walk. He stands on second after the tag up, hoping to be the third run in this game. They've scored one per inning thus far. Here's a 1-2 to Brown. Line drive of the box. Hodo ranging over across his body. Got him! Just nipping Brown over at first base. We'll have to take a peek at the replay to see if he actually did. Boy, it's close. And now watching Brown's reaction on the replay, he did not think he was out. Ooh, I thought he was safe live looking at the replay. I think he's safe. Brown, fastest guy in the league by the numbers, leads the league in stolen bases. Tough call for our fielding umpire who's up at second base with a runner on. Definitely. And as I slow it down, which they don't have the luxury of, or a replay, obviously, in umpireville here in the USPBL. It does look like he's safe, but line drive to left. Snared by Attilus, throws across his body. My goodness! <laughs> Hodo and Attilus have a day! The middle of the infield, keeping a big run off the board at third base. It remains 2 nothing, Mammoth, thanks to your fifth third out. Brought to you by Fifth Third Bank here in the top of the third inning. Two close calls over there at first. Leaf didn't like that one either. Nice job by the middle infielders of the Unicorns. Really good arms that both of those guys have and tough plays working away from first base. Call it what you want, safer out at first. Those were nice throws by both Hodo and Attilas. There's JJ the Water Boy presented by Michigan First Credit Union here today. Chelsea Estes is down with our DTE Energy Kid Race, the mascot. Lancelot against Ben. So we'll see if Lance uh, gives this a go. What do you think? He's got no shot. <laughs> Maybe you should go do this one day. I think that'd As be the mascot or the kid? Maybe both. I'll race myself. Try to. We can both get a. We can time. both jump in a mascot. I'll race con you. Yeah, in, we'll both each in a mascot yes. costume. Which one are you gonna take? I like. Um, who was the one that lost their foot? That was the Beavers mascot, Buzz. I think I would. I think I would probably take Ribby. He lost his foot, huh? Yeah, Buzz lost it. It's either Buzz or Ribby. Ribby lost his head. Ribby lost his head, which I'm okay with. I think I can keep the head on. <laughs> But I don't think I could. I don't think I'd be able to beat you if I lost a foot. Can't beat me anyway. Whoa! <laughs> hey, when are we gonna go play wiffle ball down there in right field? We should. I, I would love to to give you my mess you up breaking ball. Mess you up breaking ball. Yeah, that's what it's called. You've never heard that? Nope. Oh, it's a it's my <laughs> special pitch. It's like Collins slider. It's, it's I'm sure it breaks. It's, it's, it's perfectly. It's, as it's not. It's not. Does. It's not a slider. No, it's not a slider. It's or a curveball. It's actually a screwball. It's more over the top and it stays straight and then literally drops off the table. This is wiffle ball, of course. My curveball in a real baseball is not nearly <laughs> as good. Here's Colin Ledbetter. He'll take over on the mound here in the third. Good job by Jake Fiorito to navigate what could have been another potential mess in the third. Second inning in a row where the Mammoths have coached a leadoff walk. Weinberger took second base, advancing from first off the flyout to right center. That was the first out. Then the good play by Hodo, which he was probably safe at first, but the call was made out on the field, so that's not going to be reversed, obviously, here. And a 6-3 ground out off a really nice play by Attilus. Maybe the best play we've seen Luis make yet in his pro career. Yeah, he's been really good up at shortstop. Hasn't had a bunch of opportunities to make a play that good. He's had a few bounding balls away from first base that could have garnered maybe a Jeter-esque throw that just haven't quite been fielded perfectly, but he's been Mr. Consistent at shortstop defensively all season. Get a chance to watch any of that Jeter you know, I caught some last night. I don't. I am not a, a fan at all of a lot of these documentaries coming out. I don't, I don't want to say, you know, some of these famous athletes should pass before their documentaries, but Tiger Woods, he just had his documentary come out a couple years ago. His 
they were making the documentary, and then he won the Masters. His career wasn't over. Jeter's just a few years removed. If I can remember a player or an athlete competing, they shouldn't have a documentary out yet. Morales not able to get that one. He made a nice play earlier, a leadoff infield hit, if you want to call it that, for Malik Bolin here in the 30s, two for two. Who else have Tom Brady came out? He's got like two. He's got the tuck rule, I think, and then a he's got a show. Does he really? Hmm. I think he has some sort of show. Maybe not. I don't know. Who knows whether he's actually playing football or not if he's finally on to retirement activities. Right now he's playing this season, and they're going to win the Super Bowl apparently. First pitch slider inside to Leandy Castro. He has a big TV contract waiting for him. When he yeah. does decide to retire. Where's, where's that money for the play-by-play -play announcers, huh? <laughs> now the 1-0. Line drive to center field. Thomas backing up for out number one here in the third. Pretty well struck off the bat from Castro. Second one today. He's done that. Two fly outs to the outfield. One to left, one to center. Now both pretty hard hit. Here's Ari Sakopoulos now struck out back in the first, but that was where Colin threw some of his best sliders that we've seen tonight. The one just devastating in on the hands to end the at-bat. Ari was committed to it already and ended up probably a ball, but nonetheless very, very tough to hold off. As There's a slider away, 1-0. I think where Colin won the at-bat last time against Ari was he started him off with a fastball, and obviously the word on the street is against Ari, fastballs with a red circle and a line through it. Don't throw them to him because he's been so good at punishing them all season long for nine home runs and 20 RBIs. But so then he's by, you know, the transitive properties, not expecting a first pitch fastball necessarily. And when you throw it and kind of keep him off balance like that, can be to your advantage. Here's the 1-1. Off the glove of Hewitt. Bolin heads to second base. 2-1 and one on Sakopoulos. Struck out back in the first. One of two Ks tonight for Colin Ledbetter. He was able to survive two walks in the sixth. Those are with two outs as well. Loaded the bases. 2-1, fastball low, 3-1, and, and kind of interesting here. In this entire at-bat, Ari Sakopoulos has been choking up, which I'm not sure we've seen him do that so far this year. Yeah, I don't remember it being that much. Usually, you know, Power home run hitters aren't choking up on the bat that much. That one pops sky high. Brown calling for it. Well in foul territory as he makes the catch. Two down with Bolin on second. And here's Noah Childress now. Childress had a single back in the second through the six hole. Two runs off four hits and no errors for the Mammoths. No runs off three hits and no errors here in the third. It just feels like these base paths have been busy all night, every inning. Yeah, these, these books are not pretty right now. Well, today is stop warming up for the Unicorns after the quick-ish inning compared to what we've seen in the first two by Fiorito. Got some help from his defense, no doubt, after the leadoff walk in the third. Here's the 1-1. Nearly hit his leg as Bolin heads to third. Well, there's nobody that draws potential hit by pitches like a magnet besides Noah Childress, huh? Well, him and Houston Parker. Yeah. He, the two but Noah hit. doesn't end up getting hit most of the time. I mean, you look yeah, at his numbers. He, he does not quite take them as much. 
as Parker does, a guy who's been hit double-digit times this season. But, I mean, Childress just wants to hit to swing the bat. And obviously Houston does too, but... Two one, fastball in three and one, here on Childress, and of course he's had the the two unfortunate balls that have hit his hand in two different spots, pretty on, much on opposite hands, right? No, it was the same hand, but three one one on the thumb, which basically broke his thumb. He was playing with that, and then one on more of the I think it's the hammock bone on the other side. Um. But geez, being hit in the hand is never fun, regardless of the velocity of the fastball yeah, it most of matter. the time. But when you're hit twice on the same hand in a different spot, it's got to be frustrating. When I think of Childress, it's those loopy breaking balls that just kind of kind of nick him, go yeah. by his <laughs> back, and he bends out of the way. I feel like he gets those more often than not. Lambert looks at a ball inside. Ledbetter's really got to slow down here. He's working pretty fast trying to get out of this inning with two outs, but maybe he needs to take a deep breath, take a pause. 1-0 popped him up. Dwayne is under it in front of the second base bag, and the shortstop will make the catch as it falls in. Nothing becomes of the leadoff single and the two-out walk. They're stranded on first and third. Still 2 nothing. Mammoth as Brennan Shabbat takes over on play-by-play -play -play when we get back. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're going to do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no-brainer. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. So despite 61 pitches through three innings, Jake Fiorito is going to come out and attempt to get out of this fourth inning. There's been some action in the Unicorns' bullpen for the last entirety of the third. We'll see how Fiorito can do against the bottom of the order against the Mammoths. Might be the reason why he's out here in the fourth. Seven, eight, nine hitters, but those hitters are two for three and getting on base. Hewitt, who will lead things off in the seven hole, walked his first time up. Dwayne singled back in the second, and Bagneski grounded out. Two nothing Mammoths after three. Two runs on four hits for them. No runs on three hits for the Unicorns. No errors anywhere. Mammoths have left four men on the base paths. The Unicorns have stranded six. Hewitt now going to have to prepare for his knees and his hips moving forward with the absence of Nick Caruso and his injury. Hewitt will... Man, the catcher duties almost every day from now on moving forward. The Mammoths don't have a backup catcher. They do have a few emergency guys who have caught before. Houston Parker was the one that Taylor Jelikowski mentioned to us that if anything were to happen to Hewitt or if he needed a day off, Parker would do it. He caught a little bit in college. Hewitt, who worked to walk his first time up, ahead 2-0 here on Fiorito. Looks like Camacho, along with Muntaner, is warming up 
in that Unicorns bullpen. Keon Taylor is walking around. We should see him tonight at some point. Swing and a miss on the fastball low, two and one. Dwayne Jr. on deck. Agneski in the hole. Breaking ball, missed it outside, three and one. Again, Hewitt ahead in the count. Infield completely covered in shadows per usual here at the USPBL. Right and center field still need the shades as they're sitting in the sun. That's Castro and Galassi. 3-1, walked him on five pitches. Hewitt 0 for 0 with two walks today. He did score the second run of the game for the Mammoths back in the second inning. See what he can do here in the fourth. Trying to add to that lead. Yeah, the four walks kind of unlike what Jake Fiorito has done. We, we talked about it, just two per nine coming into today's game. Not a high strikeout volume guy, but it's just not something you're used to seeing. seeing. And Adrian Guzman maybe buying some time for his bullpen once again. And Jean is warming up, wondering what's going on as well. Guzman was certainly expecting a longer day for Fiorito, someone who we talked about in the pregame as a guy who will very consistently get you five or four good innings. And on most days, that's what you'd like, but especially here today after you've already used three of your arms yesterday, given only one inning, but still. Fiorito has gone four-plus innings in all of his last five starts. Did have one inning against these Mammoths back at the start of this month on July 2nd. That was in relief. This one's over the head of Lambert by Dwayne. A base hit. Hewitt holds at second base. Walking a single, just like the fourth inning for Hewitt and Dwayne Jr. Two on, nobody out for Bagneski. Top of the order waiting on deck. Don't get me wrong, this has been a good start offensively for the Mammoths, but I think if you had their druthers and really looking back at what's been the first three innings, you've had a leadoff base runner on in two of the three, you had a solo shot to right. You'd like to see a little bit more pad certainly against this unicorn squad very early. And obviously that they're going to continue this trend. They're going to score a decent amount of runs here today, but looks like it's the end of the line for Fiorito. Two on, nobody out. Jean Muntaner will inherit a jam when we return here in the top of the fourth. Mammoths leading the unicorns 2-0 on the USPBL Network. about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. John Muntaner takes over for the Unicorns, trying to get out of a tough spot. Hewitt on second, Dwayne on first, leadoff walk and single for the Mammoths. Already with a two-run lead here in the fourth. 
Muntaner has been primarily a starter for the Unicorns this season. Has done a little bit in relief. It's actually split half and half, 12 appearances, six of them starts. He's got a 2-1 and one record in just below 30 innings of work. 14 runs, 13 of them earned, 34 strikeouts to 12 walks. It's been a roller coaster for John this season. Has had some very high ups and some lower downs as well. See what he can do. Trying to keep his team in this game. It's never over if you're the Unicorns, but they just the momentum has not been on their side. It seems like despite it only being 2 0, it's been all Mammoths and. Morale is squared up to bunt. Excuse me, Bagneski, that is. Squared up to bunt. Popped it foul for strike one. And you kind of describe that ups and downs. That's kind of what his team as a whole has been dealing with in this second half of the year. Started three and three. They just jumped out to such a large lead and it took so long to even get their second or third loss. It just doesn't feel like they're being challenged too much right now, but... You potentially lose two in a row in two straight days here today. And again, let's not jump to conclusions here in the top of the fourth. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a little bit more urgency here soon. And I think for the Unicorns, too. Magneski checks the 1-1. One, one. Did not go. 2-1. and one. We were talking about this with some of the baseball ops interns before the game today that, you know, the Beavers are chasing. They're probably going to win some more games as this season continues. They've got a really good lineup now. They're trying to get to that first place spot and now despite the fact that every team in the league makes the playoffs it's important to be in first because you get a double bye all the way into the championship so once the playoffs start our first game is the four seed versus the three seed. The winner of that plays the two seed and the winner of that will play our number one team. It's been the Unicorns all season long but still over a month left of play and only a four-and-a-half game lead on the Beavers and losing two this weekend, as you mentioned, before we even get to Sunday would not be good. Obviously, you want the, the highest seed and you want to win in as many games as possible. Pick it up after this. Payoff pitch to Bagneski. Did not get the call on the curveball from Muntaner, and now the bases are juiced for the top of the order and Mitch Morales. But if it was me, I, I kind of would lean towards the second seed. Obviously, you don't have to expound all your pitching by playing the first day. But, you know, you're, you're talking about sitting around waiting until Sunday. When yeah, these players aren't used to that. Right. Because the way that championship weekend goes is Friday, Saturday, Sunday games. And we end the week before on a Sunday. So that's if you're the number one seed a full seven days before playing again. It's the best for pitching and, and just kind of throw in the kitchen sink and not worrying about, oh, this guy's got to go two or three or four here today. And don't get me wrong, you can't save anybody in the playoffs usually. But strategically, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Morales looks at two of them outside, 87-mile-an-hour fastballs. For Muntaner, it's the four-seam curve changeup and slider. Primarily four-seam and curve. Those two account for three-quarters of his pitch mixing. Two-zero fastball. Morales had it timed up but misses, and it's 2-1. and one. Obviously, that hasn't been much of an issue for these <laughs> unicorns over the last three years or the history of the... USPBL, but it's fun to talk about, us broadcasters. You know, we're always trying to find things to say. Well, that's, we get paid to talk, so <laughs> that's, if there's something to talk about, give it to me. I'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> two and two now on Morales as he fouls one off. What do you think at home? You can chime in on Facebook and YouTube, a little interaction here. Would you rather have all those days off and play in the championship game as the number one seed? Or maybe you want that? semi-final spot I would like to be the three seed I feel like the three seed it'd be fun to play in all three days and maybe go on a run to a championship and be an upset and also I feel like the three seed wouldn't be too far behind it wouldn't dwindle your confidence too much and Morales is hit by the pitch on the 2-2 two -two count that scores a run Hewitt comes around he scores 
for the second time after a leadoff walk. And the lead has grown to three. Boy, the lead already feels bigger, but if they put up a big inning here in the fourth, it can feel almost insurmountable the way this game has gone thus far. And you have the right spot of the lineup up, guys, that have been productive here today. Thomas had the first run with the home run back in the first. Weinberg with a double and a leadoff walk. Parker with a walk. Brown with a double. There you see the standings that we were talking about. Mammoth's trying to get to double-digit wins. Those Beavers not far behind the Unicorns, only four and a half games, and looks like it might be less if the current situation holds today. Beavers play tomorrow against the Hoppers in a doubleheader. We'll see how things shake out there. 1-0 on Thomas, fouled off. Big swing. He's already had one of those today. Grounded out to the pitcher his second time up. For Thomas, that home run was his 10th RBI professionally. Comes from Virginia Tech out of college. Another pop foul. One of the few Division I college guys playing here. Morale is on this team. Another one out of Utah Valley State playing in the WAC. Not the WAC I know. <laughs> I don't get Josh it. Josh Hines is joining the WAC. Wolverine Hoosier yeah, Athletic Conference. Yeah, correct, yeah. Where your school Madonna plays. 1-2. Left field foul. Caught it pretty good. Nice distance on that. And again, Thomas fouls another one. That's three straight foul balls. Outfield and infield both straight up. Corner infielders at no doubles. Bases loaded, nobody out here in the fourth. A run has come across already. One, two, swing and a miss. Much needed strikeout for Muntaner to follow up the hit by pitch run. Thomas down on strikes. And that is the first strikeout of the day for the Unicorns total. Five walks and only one K in a hit batter. The one K wouldn't be a surprise entering given what Fiorita has done, but the five walks is a surprise. Weinberger looks at a called ball one. He's reached twice today. Double in the first, walk in the third, both times Got in scoring position, was caught stealing in that first inning, trying to go for third in what turned out to be a pretty big out. That's kept the score relatively close. Perhaps another run or two on the boards if Weinberger isn't caught. One, one, low, ball two. Elon Taylor has also been warming up uh, down the left field line for the Unicorns, so I'm sure they don't want to bring him in here in the fourth, at least the fifth. Two and two, Muntaner evens the count. That's a guy generally they like to bring in later because of how his ball kind of gets lost in the scoreboard lights, given the angle that it comes at, that sidearm. Especially at night, they really like that. Yep. This one's out to center, will score a run. Galassi ranging back, makes the grab. Tagging and scoring is Dwayne. Now 4 nothing Mammoths. It's one of those balls we talked about with Nick Caruso and some other guys. How they hit it on the barrel, hit it hard, hit a kind of a tailing ball, but Galassi saw it hang up there enough to record the second out. This is just kind of how the Mammoths have gotten runs here today. Obviously, this inning a bit different with the bases loaded and a few walks and a hit by pitch that's driven in a run, but 
Not too much. A run in every inning but the third, just kind of methodically putting them up there. Still not out of the woods yet for Muntaner. He's got two on, two out for the best RBI hitter in the lineup and best hitter in this Mammoth's lineup, Houston Parker, in the four hole. Walk and a fly out to center his first two times up. In the dirt, good block by Parkinson. Both runners held. It's Morales at first and Bagneski at second on the fly out to center from Weinberger. Well, we were kind of pondering, obviously, with the injury to Caruso, who the emergency catcher might be. It's Houston Parker. He caught a little bit in college. 2-0, hard hit through past Attilis being waved around. Is Bagneski, the throw to the plate is up the line and off. RBI single for Houston Parker. That's 18 for him on the season. And it's keep the inning alive in the fourth. A nice hard hit ball, didn't try to do too much, just ripped it up the middle. Bagneski with a good read. He was around third in time to make it a close-ish play at home with a throw cemented and being able to score fairly easily what is a big fifth run here in the fourth. So one in the first, one in the second, three here in the fifth. Brown will be the eighth batter sent to the plate. Two on and two out again. Morales at second, now Parker over at first. Brown jumps on that fastball, but too early. Pounds it foul. Talked to Brown before the game about him not choking up as much on the bat. It's something he's kind of gone back and forth on in his career, but he thought it was a little bit more mental and intense, you know, why he wasn't maybe hitting the ball as well as he could have. Popped him up very softly. Lambert will come in and call the pitcher off for out number three, but three runs come across the board. For the Mammoths, they take a 5-0 lead. Unicorns batting in the fourth on the other side of the break. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Fourth inning, Colin Ledbetter stays out there, the starter for the Mammoths. Seems like it might continue that way until he has... Pitched no more than Mammoth's bullpen. Still desolate right now. 59 pitches through three innings for Ledbetter. And he plunks Parkinson on the 60th. Chance for the Unicorns. Maybe get a free pass and start a rally. Just haven't quite been able to hit the ball as they would have liked. Two hits for Bolin, one for Childress. Those were the only three that Ledbetter have given up. So 
Now it's Luis Attilis with a man on and nobody out. Attilis walked his first time up in the second inning. He's really turned his season around after struggling to get off the ground professionally. Coming out of Lenore Rhine down in the Carolinas for his college days. Well, actually just his last college season. Originally went to college back near home in Boston for four years before transferring to LR to finish his collegiate career. Two and one now. Ledbetter has certainly got out of these innings. Maybe not his sharpest stuff, especially the last couple innings. We'll see if he tightens it up a bit here in the fourth. Tillis, uh, another base hit. It gets past Leaf. This will be extra bases. Parkinson rumbling to third. Essien's going to send him. It's cut off by Brown. Attilis going for third, head first, and he's safe. Crowd livens up for the Unicorns' first run of the ball game after giving up three in the top half. They strike here in the bottom of the fourth. Nobody out, man on third, and a run across already. RBI triple for that man, Luis Attilis. Well, Leaf was already playing in, so he kind of had to feel that he was on an island with that ball getting by him. It didn't get all the way to the warning track. Good thing because who knows, Attilus might have made it around to home if that was the case. But this is what the Unicorns offense needed here in the fourth to get things going. One of the few triples this season. I believe the number is less than five right now. A couple of them have been... To the Mammoths, Elijah Brown has two, Buddy Dwayne has one, and that's really the only way you're going to get them, even if you bury it in that right field corner or if something like that happens, it gets past an outfielder. In trouble for Ledbetter now. Hit batter, triple, and now 3-0 on Hodo. Nobody out, man on third, top of the order, waiting on deck. Inside a four-pitch walk. Wild pitch. Attila's coming home. He scores standing up. Wow. 5-2. So after the triple that scored a run, Attila scores himself with good aggression on the four-pitch walk to Hodo. <laughs> you talk about aggression. I mean, he read it right away, and that's... I feel like we've said that a couple of times here tonight. That's the only way he makes it home on that play, let alone standing up. This one's roped on the right field line. Glossy with a hard hit ball. Hodo's got some speed. He's going to third. He'll be held there. Glossy waits at first. A quick four batter rally and counting for the Unicorns. 99 off the bat of Golossi. Another hard hit ball for him. So many of those this season. Bowling due up. Boy, who said the Unicorns were out of this game? That wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't exclusively say it, but it, it felt like it you, almost. You implied it. But so did I, so we're both at fault. <laughs> and, and we should know better. You can never count this Unicorns lineup out. And I guess if you were to, if this was a movie you'd already seen, you'd know that the Mammoth's not quite capitalizing on as many runs as maybe they could have was foreshadowed for some trouble. First pitch, Bolin pops it foul and out of play. So we mentioned that there was... A desolate Mammoth's bullpen at the start of this inning. Now there's some action going on. Catchers and pitchers making their way down there. Certainly looks like it's going to be a longer inning for Ledbetter. Bolin went around on the slider, 0-2. 
Two runners with some speed. Galassi at first, Hodo at third. Hodo likely scores on anything put in play. O2, got him, strike three. Bolin watched it go by for the first out. It's a huge strikeout right there. Colin Ledbetter needing an out in some variety. Definitely opens up the double play here with Castro at the plate, but now the Mammoths all of a sudden searching for some outs here in the fourth. Castro searching for a hit. Two hard hit fly outs today. One to deep left, warning track, and then one to center. That was on a frozen rope to Thomas out there. There goes Galassi for second to throw down from Hewitt. No, he fakes it. Hodo was probably coming home had he thrown it. Second and third. Heard a, an interesting story secondhand about Jim Essien in a, a similar situation to that one time as that pitch up and in on Castro, and it's 3-0. and But Skip used to catch, he was a catcher, and he used to catch with a sponge in his glove, is what I was told. And there were runners on the corners, less than two outs, and he knew, he, he had it figured out. As Castro pops this one foul, it's going to reach out of play. But Essien had it figured out that the runner on first was going to go. And he went to his pitcher, and he said, after you throw this pitch, duck, because this guy's going to go for second, and I'm going to throw my sponge. And he went back to the umpire and said, can I like throw my sponge? Is that legal to fake out the runner at third? Sure enough, runner goes to second, throws the sponge. Castro, a little flare into right field. Going back is Leaf. He'll make it on the warning track. This will score Hodo. Now the Unicorns within just two runs. They've scored three in the first six batters here in the fourth. Continue. Anyways, he throws the sponge down to second. Pitcher ducks. Runner from third comes home, and who's standing there at home plate with the ball and not the sponge to tag him out? Jim Essie. <laughs> Pretty smart play, huh? It's interesting. There isn't a rule against it, huh? I don't know. I heard it secondhand, so. Yeah, I'll have to ask him about it. Yeah. Haven't, se haven't seen him, been able to, to talk to him since. So the sack fly from Castro brings home Hodo for the third run. Now here's Sakopoulos in another dangerous position. He's been vocal about looking for his 10th home run. He wants to be the first to double digits. He's well in front of anybody else league-wide with nine, but still wants to get to 10. Rope that one foul, 0-2. Oh, Won't bet against it, I can tell you that. <laughs> I wouldn't bet, bet against anything as far as what he can do at the plate. Lossie also tagged. He waits at third on the sacrifice fly. 0-2 Ledbetter trying to get out of the inning. Way outside. Nice catch by Hewitt to save a run. Strikeout in the first for Sakopoulos and a pop out to the first baseman in the third. One, two, fastball, close, but Sakopoulos took it for ball two. Two, two, foul. What did that hit? Something metal, and then a fan must have had it. Maybe off the roof and then back down. I stopped looking. It was out of our sight. So we'll try the 2-2 two -two again with the 300 hitter swing and a miss. Sakopoulos down on strikes for the second time today. Ledbetter avoids 
A little bit more possible damage, but the Unicorns put themselves right back in this game. They give up three in the top of the fourth and score three themselves. It's 5-3 Mammoths as we head to the fifth. As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension, Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. It'll be Keon Taylor in the fifth, the right-handed sidearm pitcher for the Unicorns. We, uh, we talked about him pregame. Jeremy, myself, and Dan Mueller are... Baseball analytics intern, the guy that runs the flight scope up here, about some of the best pitchers in the league. And Taylor was one of the first guys that we mentioned. He's been so tough to hit this year. Has the best win-loss record, which is not as an important stat in baseball anymore. But five wins to his name, zero losses, 15 appearances, a sub-1 ERA. He's only given up one earned run in 21 and two-thirds innings of work, six walks to 27 Ks, opponents hitting 152 against him. Tough guy to hit, especially for the righties. We talked about it before as well. They, they kind of like to bring him in a little bit later than this, as funny as that sounds, when it gets a little darker and the ball starts to blend in a bit more with the scoreboard. But to be honest, it doesn't feel like 844 per se, and we're still in the middle innings here, so... It's a little later than you think, but the sun's setting, you know, late for summertime, obviously, think, right now. I think regardless, 834 versus 854, whenever you bring Taylor in, if that ball's getting lost in the scoreboard, it's going to be hard to pick up no matter what. Right. A one on Leaf. For Keon, it's a two-seam fastball, slider, changeup, and sinker. That sinker and the slider are the main two, has... Rarely used the two-seam, less than 2% 2 this year. This one's hit in the air to right. A little liner for a base hit. Castro struggles for a second to make the play, but Leaf gets on on the leadoff single. That went at 100, and Castro believes that, I can tell you, after his reaction on how, ball that, how quickly that ball got to him. Well, that's a guy, Brian Leaf, who... Anytime he puts the bat on the ball, it's probably going to be hit pretty hard. Already has a top three longest home run on the season. Up in the upper echelon of hard hit percent of the league. He waits on first slider outside. Slider hangs out around 75. The sinker just above 85. Those are the main two we're going to see. Those account for almost 95% of Taylor's pitches. 1-0, runner goes. Leaf rumbling down. It bounces off his foot. He's safe. And into center field, glossy quickly there to recover it. Guys that don't normally run are getting a chance to run here today, huh? <laughs> Picking their spots well, picking um, bouncing pitches and or pitches that have gotten away from the catchers here today to go, and it's worked out. Yeah, Leaf only two stolen bases on the season. That's his third. 1-1 one, one on Hewitt. Looks at it for a ball, too. He's had a great eye tonight. Two walks already, two runs scored. Both leadoff walks, batting as our second hitter in the fifth. That one's outside on the sinker, three and one. Any 
walked him on five pitches. So in three at-bats, Duncan Hewitt has taken a walk in five pitches in all three of them. 3-1 counts. He works the walk. Scored in the first two. We'll see what he can do here in the third. Don't count on that again, huh? Walk. Yeah. Not, it's not a Duncan Hewitt thing. No. It's just a baseball thing. And interestingly enough, too, Buddy Dwayne followed both of those at-bats up with a single. See what he does. Top of the fifth. He singled and scored last inning. First pitch sinker. Not getting the call is Taylor 1 and 0. Oh. Taylor, you look at the league ranks for a lot of his stats. A lot of small numbers there. Top five in many. Gets Dwayne waving at the sinker. Top five in hits per nine. Top ten in walks per nine at two and a half. Top five in opponent average. 